Welcome to the Reclaimed Heirloom. My name's Christina. In today's video, I want to show you how to do a decorative finish with chalk paint. This little adorable cabinet was left to the curb and with a little TLC, decided that I think we could refurbish this. Using scrap wood and some wood filler was able to create a stabilizer to recreate the front of this cabinet. We had used a fine grit sandpaper to sand out and smooth over the wood filler. There was a large piece missing in the corner of this cabinet on the table and my husband had used a piece of scrap wood and beveled it. Once we've glued it, now we're gonna go ahead and sand it with a 40 grit sandpaper. We also used a 120 grit sandpaper to smooth out any of the rough surfaces. Being a curbside find, I'm going to play it safe and I'm going to use an odor killer and a shellac before I start a decorative finish. Using Annie Salone chalk paint in olive and country gray, I want to show you a really fun decorative finish. First, I'm going to start with a base coat and I generally start with a moist paintbrush. When applying a base coat, what I'd like to do is ultimately create a beautiful texture, but I don't want to apply the paint thick and gloppy. I want to apply it so it's a nice smooth touch, but still be able to present a really nice texture. I want lots of random brush strokes, but I also like to go around my edges and corners of my pieces again, so I don't have any glops of paint at the corners or in edges. You still want your paint to be applied at a professional level, but at the same time creating the textures, I want to move my brush around as random as possible. It's also really important to wait for about 24 hours to make sure that that wood filler is completely dry. So you have a good, strong, paintable surface. That's why I found it important to apply the shellac before I started with the chalk paint is because I didn't sand off all of the original finish of this wood cabinet. So this will prevent any bleed through from the wood. I'm gonna go ahead and let this first base coat dry and I wanna introduce you to clear glaze and it's acrylic glaze but it is also a water base so as you see in here in the directions water base for easy soap and water cleanup which also makes it compatible with water-based paints such as chalk paint i absolutely love clear glaze and as you can see a wide variety of faux effects you can create with paint and glaze. So I'm going to make a custom mix of four parts glaze, one part paint, and I'm just going to use tablespoons. So clear glaze looks whitish, but it dries clear. And what I'm going to do is mix my four parts glaze, one part paint with the country gray. You generally only need one good solid coat of chalk paint because it's such a thick paint, but because I wanna create some really good texture, I'm gonna apply a small second coat and really put in a lot of cross hatch and random strokes in my second coat. And you're gonna see why as we continue. And chalk paint will dry quite quickly, so I'm probably gonna give this a good hour to dry. In the meantime, I wanna go ahead and use the Minwax Gel Stain for the tabletop as well as the back. As it looks pretty grungy, I've already cleaned it and it still kinda of looks ratty, so I thought some gel stain might clean this up really nice. I absolutely love gel stain. It's thick, it's durable, it's easy to use, and it doesn't have a smell to it, which is quite nice as well. I am using a disposable sponge applicator, and I generally try to make my brush stroke into one direction. So working on a horizontal, I just go into one direction. And I find it really important to go around the edges and right underneath the lip of tabletops. And I'm gonna go ahead and proceed with the 
gel stain onto the back just again to clean it up and it'll just look a lot nicer and more professional. If you are working on a furniture project that is in a much better condition or it's yours personally and the back is in a good condition, this of course is probably not a necessity. But in situations like this, to me, it's just nice to go ahead and get all the little corners and backsides and inside cleaned up really nice. You can always use a clean, lint-free cloth and wipe your gel stain back, but I much prefer the rich dark tones, so I generally just will smooth it out. And now that the base coat is completely dry, we can start to move on to our decorative finishes. If you're going to restore the original hardware, I recommend washing them really well in soap and water. And I use a charcoal spray and chalk paint and a sealer, so this way it doesn't rub off. I am a huge fan of Leonardo da Vinci. I absolutely love his artwork. So I printed this off on plain white paper on my home printer, and I want to use this as a decoupage for that door. Now that I've sized it to fit the in recessed area of the door frame, I like to go around and actually burn the edges. And the main reason I'm doing this, not only because I like the irregular edges, but it actually is going to thin out the edges of the paper. And as we continue with the decoupage, you'll see why. I'm going to use Mod Podge and a disposable sponge applicator and all I'm going to do is apply the Mod Podge to the door first. You really want to smooth it, you don't want it to be clumpy. Once you've placed your decoupage image where you want it. The key to making sure you're not getting air bubbles is going from the center out and really smoothing out your paper to get any of the air pockets from underneath out. I then apply the Mod Podge directly on top of the image and I continuously keep using long brush strokes to smooth out the image against my surface. This is going to dry fairly quickly, but I'm going to continue on to another side and we can move to our clear glaze and custom color glaze. If you are new to glaze, any kind of glaze, I recommend getting the General Finishes Extender. So this will increase your working time. All the products that I use will be in the description box below. Starting with just clear glaze and I have a wet rag all I'm doing here is applying just straight clear glaze, nothing else. I'm going to work in small sections with my custom mix of the country gray and clear glaze. I'm going to put that directly on top. I like to do what is called a ragging technique. So I want to use the crinkles in the rag to create more texture, but you can also just wipe it back. As you can see, what I'm doing is I'm kind of dabbing it out. And the reason I have the clear glaze, which I'm doing here again, underneath is because this allows as an eraser. If I've done something or I don't like how the texture has been created and I want to make some changes, that clear glaze underneath allows me to wipe it out. So think of using clear glaze with your custom color glaze as an eraser. So if you don't like how it's working out, you can grab your clear glaze and I'm gonna show you right here. This little spot with my finger, I'm taking some clear glaze, 
wiping it out, grabbing my rag, and now I can change the direction of how my textures are working. So there is a lot of play and forgiveness when you use the clear glaze first, then add your custom color glaze. I'm going to show you a quick demonstration of just using the custom color glaze. So I'm not applying the clear glaze first. I'm just putting that custom color glaze down first. I'm going to go ahead and use my cloth. Again, I'm using a ragging technique and I'm just going to keep dabbing and creating my textures. And as you can see, it's a little bit thicker and it's a little bit harder to play with. So adding the clear glaze first really allows a lot more forgiveness and play, but you can do either way. It all depends on the style and how much of the glaze you want to show and how much of it you would like it to be more transparent. So again, I'm applying my clear glaze first, then I'm going to add the color glaze on top. And again, this is where I can play, I can add, I can go back and I can erase. So sky's the limits on what you can create. And it looks so beautiful when you've got all of that base texture that was originally created when I did the base coat in the olive. It has something to sit in. It's got the low points the glaze can sit into. You can always add one or two applications. Just wait for each application to dry completely first, and then you can do another glaze on top. This also applies to other pre-made glazes. A lot of the popular glazes are in the rich antique tones as well. So the black, the umber, and the uh, old ochres. There's lots of beautiful color uh, mixes that are pre-done in a glaze. If you use clear glaze first, then go ahead and add your color glaze, whether it's a custom or one that's pre-made, you have a lot more forgiveness and you're gonna have so much fun with using glaze. As we continue on, I want to show you how I'm going to shadow in and create different highlights and lowlights around that decoupage image so it looks like it was painted onto the cabinet door. I'm actually going to be adding in a pre-made glaze by General Finishes in the Burnt Umber. So now that I have the entire piece done with the custom color glaze with that country gray on top of the olive chalk paint, I'm going to go ahead and create some more depth with this and I'm going to show you some shadowing and textured effects you can do with just regular glaze. So using an artist brush and you're just going to want some clean towels, shop towels or paper towel. This is just a glaze that has a pre-tint color of burnt umber and this is where I want to show you you can create shadows and textures with just glaze. With the clean shop towel and just my finger I've wrapped it around my finger all I'm going to do here is just lightly dab in the burnt umber glaze. Now, with my finger, all I'm going to do is just dab it, and I'm going to keep dabbing. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a shadow, but it's also going to create high and low depth with this color. And I'm going to go around all the edges and corners of this entire piece, including that decoupage. I always recommend if you're going to do shadowings is to start off lightly. You want to build onto it. I am using the glaze quite thinly and I'm going around and creating a depth shadow. But as it dries, I'm going to continue to add more and more. And I'm also going to go back and use that country gray custom glaze to create the highlights as the burnt umber is going to create the lowlights. And as it continues on, 
what you're going to notice is it's going to completely shadow out as I continue here that papered edged look which you see on the decoupage. I found it very helpful to burn the edges of the paper just to create it to be a little bit thinner than the actual paper to create this illusion. This step will vary depending on the color design you choose, as well as what the color design and how you've created your decoupage. But again, you can layer and layer with the glaze on top of each other until you've created the shadow and the image and the effects that you want. But again, demonstrating to you how beautiful and easy glaze is to work with. You can have so much fun and it does create a beautiful textured look as well as creating depth and dimension to any of your furniture art pieces and decorative finishes. And remember, have fun with this. It's only paint. If you don't like something, you can always go back to the base coat and try something else. Most of all, have fun with this. I'm really happy with how the results are turning out. Now, because this particular little cabinet, it was not in the best of conditions, I still really like its little imperfections. So all I want to do is go around and create some depth and some shadowing with the burnt umber glaze. And I'm just using my fingertip and the shop towel and I'm going around and I'm kind of making it irregular because over time when things are aged, it's never in a straight line. So you want it to have kind of some ups and downs and you don't want it to be too straight across and just wipe it. So I like to create some irregular uh, shapes around my corners and edges with the glaze. I'm just creating a little bit of shadowing and age around areas that I felt would naturally be worn down over time. Applying the same effect around the sides of the dresser where there is a panel, I'm going to go around and create some low lights and some irregular aging just with that burnt umber glaze and just tap it in. This creates a beautiful depth, it creates some more texture and a natural aged look. And remember, from the beginning steps, you can always apply clear glaze first. So as you're playing around with how you're creating your design with any style glaze or color glaze, you know now how to correct it and how you can have control on where and how you want that glaze to look. So it's definitely a great little tip to know. So really important to know, glaze does not seal your chalk paint projects. So I still need to go and put a clear wax onto this project to seal it and protect the chalk paint finish. And you can use a clear wax or you could even use a lacquer finish. It really depends on the use of the piece that you're doing. Again, I'm super happy with my results. I love the texture. The wax has now moistened it and enriched the colors and made it all come to life. And I'm so excited with the results. And considering its condition, I think it's, I think it's adorable. And I really hope that you've enjoyed and learned some really fun tips and tricks with this tutorial. And stay tuned for next week's video because my husband came home with this and oh, have I got some big plans and some new products I have never demonstrated on any of my tutorials. I am so looking forward to sharing them with you. So thank you so much for watching this video and don't forget to give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. I look forward to sharing another decorative finish with chalk paint project with you next Saturday. And if you have any questions, please 
feel free to leave me a comment in the comment box below. I'll see you next week. Take care.